Hey guys, Mark Brashy, Pro Tech Dog Training and Red, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The first thing I noticed with Red when I went to a consultation yesterday to check out the dog was his insecurity. He's very clinging with the owner. He's only been in the backyard. Owner's hardly taken him any place. So I've got to recover the dog from that environmental lack, right? He got robbed of environment, so we don't know how he's going to react when we go out in public. Rhodesians are, in general, a pretty strong dog, so shouldn't be too hard to recover him. And right now, again, what I usually do with a brand new dog is I don't do anything but build bond. He's got a great disposition, good temperament. He's not aggressive, doesn't have anything else that's pronounced that I see so far. We're going to see more as we kind of probe and, and go along, but first thing is, like I told the owners, to recover the dog from what he's been robbed of already, which is environment, right? People, places, things. And that's what I always start. You're paying me for my time, and bottom line, I always start with getting inside the dog's head and figuring out where he's at. I don't care about heel, sit down, stay as much as I care about where's the dog's head at in the work. Drive state, his mental attitude in the work. That's what I care about more than anything else. So that's what I'm going to be working on for the first month and then basically teaching him no good and yes, introducing him to a clicker, he has no idea, and giving the fundamentals and the baseboard of what he needs to work. What is that? You dropped hot dogs on the ground, that's not a good thing. No, I don't want you to have those. No. Yes, good boy, good. Good. He has no clue, but he's catching up from body language, spatial pressure. That's how you get a dog to work for you in the regards. A lot of it's just energy and body language that gets what you want. Dogs pick up on it if you know what you're doing. Kind of like a... Good. Good boy. One of the first things also is he's got a martingale on. Basically a collar that'll tighten up when you pull on it. It's got another loop on and two rings here and as you pull that tightens up he's not going to be able to get away from you if you hang on to the leash but there's nothing that's going to stop him from pulling because you're going to hit opposition reflex he's going to want to pull against this and it becomes something that actually promotes pulling so people have a hard time because they don't understand that i can't give any kind of correction i can't give any leash pressure that's going to be effective with a strong dog like this so we'll be going to a pinch collar as soon as we can but I've got to build relationship first I won't put him on the first day I don't want him to have any negative thoughts two or three days of pattern and routine getting fed me building a bond and relationship with him and then I'll be probing on things like does he like to chase a ball is he into being motivated by that how good is his food drive I robbed him of a meal last night no I didn't I fed him last night but in a general sense he hadn't been fed this morning He's eight months old, so I want to feed him twice a day. The other thing I notice is he's a little overweight. Rhodesian Ridgebacks, in a general sense, have a nice chest cavity, but I want more thinness in through here. Keep in mind, a lot of people have this attitude they want to feed their dog, and they feel like the dog's being starved if they see rib. And that's not true. The dog needs to be thin and trim. He's going to live a lot longer life. It's just like us. Most, most people are obese. I'm obese. Right? If I was to see a doctor, he would say that I'm obese. I've got a lot of fat quality on my body, and it's not good for you. You're better off being a nice thin and trim. You'll live a lot longer if you're skinny, right? That's just the way it is. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi, Red. That's Red, huh? Is that Red? Huh, that Red? Yeah, hi, Red. Hi. Yeah. So in the beginning, all I would do is walk him around property, let him see things keep a good relationship and this will go for like two three days I'll take him out a couple times a day and just walk around and bond with the animal right get him to get to know my voice tone my attitude and all positive thoughts yeah, good boy. yes good boy good there you go good and back to our clicker because he has no idea what that means so I can start marking that by clicking right away putting food in his face right he doesn't want it that much right now, but he will as we go along as I start to play the game. Nope, I'm robbing him of food. And I won't do that the first couple days. I want to make sure he's eating and he has a good routine pattern. Eating in the morning, eating, I might rob him a little bit of how much I give him. But we will be thinning him down with some exercise, a lot of running of the ball, and trying to thin him down a little bit. I want to see a little bit of rib. I don't really want him too skinny. Rhodesian Ridgebacks are kind of, like I said, big chest cavities.
but he has been affected by being stuck in the backyard. Biggest thing I can tell you is if you pay attention to my videos, you watch what I'm doing with those puppies, that's the kind of thing you guys should be doing. But it is an art. You don't want to have any negative. A lot of times I'll go into a place if it's too busy or if I don't have the right feeling, I'm going to leave because I don't want any negative happening to my puppy at all, right? So the environment is never 100% uh, something you can control. I have a little bit better skill at controlling it with how I treat my environment. I'm used to the public. I'm used to actually um, getting them to do what I need to have done without affecting me. And I, don't, I, I can tell you what I do, but it's, it's interesting. I do a lot of chattering like I'm doing right now. And I talk to the dog first day out. Oh, it's his first day. And I'll say things that basically I'm manipulating the public without even them knowing it, right? And I create what I need to out of that. And if it doesn't work for me, I'm going to leave, right? If I get somebody that doesn't meet that criteria and wants to be a little bit of a, a butthead, doesn't have the right attitude, I'm leaving. And there are people out there like that. I've had some people that have an, a body language or an attitude that they hate the fact that I'm out there in Home Depot with my dog. So Home Depot allows dogs to come into their stores. It's a great thing for them. And, um, nope, I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to step on your toe. I didn't mean to. You're going to start dragging me around. You're going to get hurt. No. Good boy. No. Shh. Come on. Hey. Good boy. Good. Good boy. So in the beginning, he doesn't know anything going on, but we'll go through a honeymoon period and then he'll start to kind of try to test me and try to drag me all over the place, see what he can get away with. A lot of things dogs go through. It depends on their character and who they are as an individual. Every dog's different. He's got a great little disposition, good temperament. He's going to want to please. Huh, he's going to want to please. Yes, he is. I've worked a few to adhesions. Yeah, and I haven't seen anything unusual. They're pretty good dogs overall. Good. I hate to see them when they're a little bit... He's not too insecure, but they're a strong dog in general. Their, their temperament's able to recover, I think. We'll find out as time goes along. And as usual, people want them for home and protection and that, and they don't realize how much work it takes to develop that within the drives of the dog. This dog could be a totally different dog if he was developed properly. He's just been robbed of environment and the proper work ethic towards what you want to do to build the dog. Remember, it's building a house, right? Building a house. Now, I'm putting my face into his face. In general, if I have a new, new convert, somebody that wants to learn to train dogs, I always tell them to keep their face out of the other dog's face. They don't know the dog. I'm doing this so many years, I've got to read on a dog almost instantly. My gut tells me what I can get away with, what I can't. He's only an eight month old puppy. He's a big baby, huh? He's a big baby. Call me wrong, snap in my face, silly boy. Yeah, all right, that's my, my whiskers. That's my whiskers, yeah, hi. Yeah, that's red, huh? Hi, red, hi, yeah. A lot of chattering so the dog gets used to my voice tones. Yeah. People don't realize how much in a dog's world is sound, voice tone, body language, a lot more than verbalization. I had a customer a client yesterday, we did a class with him, and I gave the dog a uh, French command because I'm so stuck in my French, right? And he goes, wow, I don't believe he did that because the dog's been trained in German, right? And I trained him in German and it's a start, but I forget. And I go in there, I start working with a customer after a few months of not seeing him. And I'm giving him French commands. And he goes, wow, he did it. Well, it's body language, it's voice tone. The dog picks up on all that. I trained the dog, the dog fell right into it and did the behavior, right? I think it was a down or something. And I said, couche, the dog's command is plots. The dogs do not understand language, guys. They pick up on it with time. And with consistency, pretty soon they understand what that word means, but they're a lot more comfortable with and reading and understanding body language and voice tone than they are anything else, right? How did I get the dog to sit when I did this? Just a very instinctive thing. There you go, good boy, good. There you go, good boy. All right, Red. All right, we're done. We're done. Yay, good boy. All right, put him back in the kennel, short and sweet, five minutes, whatever, a little bonding. I'll do that two or three times a day for the next two or three days. Mark Farash of Protect Dog Training and Red, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, signing off. And the beautiful scene up in the hills. Beautiful view up here. It is nice. It's colder, a lot windier. But as far as what God gave us, as far as a view, it's beautiful. I'll talk to you later.